Right. God says, look, if you love me, keep my commandments. Right. Second John 6. Because that shows if you love God. I just wanna, I just wanna, I wanna be famous. Just like when you look at the brother's shirts around here, friends, it's not hard to wear. He said he gonna put curtains on the people. So, is a curtain a good thing or bad? That was you? Okay. Give me Titus 3 and 10. Because this is the thing. What our neighborhoods need are examples. Matter of fact, hold that. Give me uh, Judith 8 and 25. What our neighborhood need are examples. That's why you have various men just like us. We're coming out here and our goal is to be an example. Because we can read the Bible all day. But our people, we're visual people. I need to see you doing what you're talking about. You get what I'm saying? Read what you got. This is the book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. Bring it out. Now, therefore, O oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, yes. because their hearts depend upon us. That's why when we come out to not just here, because we're from Shreveport, whenever we go out to teach, that's why we always talk to the men first. Most sisters take that as an offense, like, oh, well, you don't want to talk to me? No. Everything starts with the men. Right, right. When you see the men change in the community, that's when the community changes because all the women and children are naturally going to follow the man. Yes, right. Read that again. Exactly. Now, therefore, O oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren because their hearts depend upon us and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. So you see what it's listing. Everything depends on the example that the men put forth. That's why it's important for the man to get straight first because then the women, they're not gonna have a problem following a righteous man. If you have a man who's cheating on you, who don't wanna work, who's selling drugs, killing his own people, doing everything against the law, the women are gonna be like, I don't know if I wanna follow you. I can do bad all by myself, I don't need help. But when you see a man doing his best to keep the commandments, He's doing his best to get along with his brother. He's doing his best to keep the laws. you would be like, you know what? I have no problem following him because I know if he's going to treat this brother across the street right, he's going to treat me right. If this brother is being an example to the children in the neighborhood, I know when we have children, he'll do right by them. You get what I'm saying, sis? Yes, right. Now give me Titus 3 and 10. This is the book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 10. Bring it up. A man that is inherited after the first and second admonition reject. So, since you paying attention, I, I know, I know he, he, you have to deal with him. Read it again for a second. This is the book of Titus, chapter 10, I mean chapter 3, verse 10. Yo. A man that is inherited. What is a heretic? Do you know? Just take a while, guys. Like you. It says a man that is a heretic. A heretic, basically, he doesn't believe what this Bible says. He's going against, just like, if we come out and we read out of the Bible and say that Jesus Christ, exactly. We say out of the Bible, Jesus Christ is a black man, and you have someone up here that says, color doesn't matter. Well, if it's written in the Bible, that means it matters, right? That's right. If, you, if the Bible says, okay, if you're a man, you have to have a job. You have another man on the side that says, well, I don't have to work because I get an employment check. That's what the Bible calls a heretic. You're going against what the Bible says. You get what I'm saying? Contradicting the Bible. I like that. Read that again from the top. A man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition. After the first and second warning, after you come out and tell them, like, hey, bro, you know you're not supposed to be doing that. The Bible says we're not supposed to eat pork. The Bible says you're not supposed to have a girlfriend, you're supposed to have a wife. Right. The Bible says you're supposed to wear fringes on your clothes, and they know that. The Bible says after the first and second time you warn them, you do what? Reject! You what? 
reject. Now it doesn't mean that you just quit trying. What's that? What that's telling you is that you try a couple times, and once you see that your words aren't getting anywhere, go back to Judith eight twenty four. Once you see that your words aren't getting anywhere, you have to then show that person by your example. You get what I'm saying? Because all of us have family members that don't want to hear this Bible. But at the end of the day, they're like, you know what, Junior? I see a change in you. You know, you don't do the same stuff that you used to do. Even when I was in the Christian church, I, you don't do the same stuff you used to do. Read that again. This is the book of Judah, chapter 8, verse 24. Now therefore, O oh brethren, let us now show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend upon us, and the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us. That's why it's important, even for the sisters. That's why we get on, it's like when you see women come out here, we say stuff to the women like, sis, you know you're not sleeping wearing pants, right? Because the women, that you have a very important job also because the woman's job is to train up the children. The children, if it's a boy, the boy is going to look at what the father's doing. So the father has to be an example to his son and to his daughter. Because even with the girls, if you're a man and you have a daughter, your daughter is going to marry the type of man that you are. So what you have to do is ask yourself, like, man, look. Do I want my daughter marrying the type of man that I am? Would I want my daughter to marry a person just like me? Half the time the answer is no. Because you know your shortcomings. You know the problems that you have. You know how you treat your wife, how you treat your children. And at the end of the day, would you want your, your daughter to be on the receiving end on how you treat your own wife? Nine times out of ten the answer is no. That's why the Bible says that you have to change. We have to convert how we think. Matter of fact, give me that John 3 and 3. No. We have to be retaught. We have to be what the Bible says, being born again. The reason why it says being born again because like, exactly, when you're a child, if you tell your daughter and your son hey, the sky is green and the grass is blue. Are they going to argue with you if they're just learning? No, they're not. Because they're going to believe you because they're like, you know what? My mom's not going to, you know, she's not going to lie to me. She's not going to steer me wrong. So I believe, okay, the sky is green and the grass is blue. That's what the Bible says you have to be retaught. And a lot of people think it has to do with your, your physical age. It has nothing to do with your physical age. Read what you got. This is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. No. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the Bible says, unless you rethink, unless you change the way you look at this Bible, unless you change the way you look at your brothers, you're not going to get the kingdom. Right. The closest you're going to get to heaven is right now. And this is nowhere close to where we're supposed to be as a people. Right. You get what I'm saying? Malachi, you got any questions? Because I see you back there just looking. Uh, not really. Now, let me ask you a question. How long have you been wearing something? How long have you known about the truth, should I say? About a good minute. About a good minute? Y'all, are y'all together? You married? Yeah. Okay. How come I ain't never seen y'all before? You a hard question. That's not got a few minutes. That's not got a few minutes. I got a few Okay. So, y'all gonna be the school today, right? Uh-oh. Yo! Uh-oh. You got some post stuff done on the school paper right here. Okay. Yeah. Stuff done on it. Okay. Okay, because you know the school is only an hour from here. Yeah. You know, that may sound like a long way, but I drive an hour to the school. Who else? This man drives an hour. He drives an hour and a half. He drives an hour and a half. So we feel your pain. But this is the thing. Just make it to the school. Don't think about, man, how am I going to make it back? We got X, Y, and Z. That's why we tell brothers and sisters, hey, if you need to carpool, carpool. Make it to the school because this is the thing. You have to be around other believers. Matter of fact, give me Leviticus 19.17. You know my Yo. favorite. My favorite. It's good to be around other brothers and sisters because that way you might be doing something, not saying that y'all are, you might be doing something wrong and you don't know that it's wrong because you don't have that brother or sister around you to point that thing out. That's like what he was saying, the whole no snitching. No, it's our job to correct one another because it's like me. I might slip and do something and I don't know that it's wrong, but he knows because both of us study, he might see it. And he'd be like, hey, officer, you know, you, you know you're not supposed to be doing this. Like, oh, shoot, I forgot about that. Thanks, bro. 
And the reason why is this, it's just, uh, it's this reason right here, read. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Bring it out. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. It says you're not supposed to hate your brother in your heart, right? But you're supposed to correct your neighbor. So that way you don't suffer sin upon him. What is the wages of sin, Malachi? Oh, yep. Death. That's right. So if you love your brother, you're going to correct him. So what doesn't happen to him? He doesn't want, he don't die. That's why it's important for us to be around each other. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Yo. That's the reason why it's important for us to be around each other. Because like I said, you might be doing something and you don't know it. You sincerely, honestly do not know it. But until you get around other brothers who read and study who, and who are wise, where they can point that thing out, and you'd be like, oh shoot, I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be doing that. Thank you. So that way, you're not at risk of being put to death. Does that make sense? Read what you got. This is the book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourself together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the child, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you. So the Bible is telling us, hey, gather yourselves together under Christ. Gather yourselves together under the commandments before that day of destruction comes. Because if you're separated, if you're not gathered together, you don't know what you're doing wrong. So when Christ returns, if you're in the middle of doing something you're not supposed to be doing, you can't say at that point, I didn't know. Because you had an opportunity to gather together to fix it. You get what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, Christ ain't trying to hear no excuses. Oh, well, we couldn't get there. We had this. I ain't gonna lie to you. There's a lot of reasons why I couldn't make it. But what I do is I reach out to various brothers. Even with gas. Gas is hot. And I drove a truck. Hey, bro, hey, can I hold on to when I get to you next Friday? I need to make it to the school. Because think about it. Is that car worth your life? Is that car worth your children's life? Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Things like that we have to think about. And I'm not saying that this is the case for you two. But I'm just saying that in general, it is very important for us as a people to gather together under the Bible, under Christ. Now, let me ask you this. How old is he? Hey, you know who Christ is? What's your name? Oh, he's nervous. He's nervous. I ain't messing with him. His name's what? Eric. Eric. See, this is the thing. A lot of our children, they don't know what color Christ is. They don't know uh, about fringes. They don't know the stuff that we're not supposed to eat. Not saying that y'all aren't teaching them, because I'm pretty sure that y'all are. But a lot of times, the kids in our community, they don't know these things. That's why it's important for us to gather together. So that way, even with the kids, they can be around other children who are keeping the commandments. They can be around other children who are practicing righteousness. So they don't think that it's just the adults. We can show the children and some of the adults that, hey, you can have fun in this truth. Right. Yeah. You can have fun keeping the commandments. That's right. That's right. Just like before this truth, the main thing I always look forward to was Christmas. That was once a year. In this truth, you have high people. You know how old these are. It's like a hundred. There's a hundred high holy days in this Bible. That's right. And the Sabbath is just one of it. Today is just one. So that's a hundred high holy. That's a hundred holidays that we gather ourselves together. But a lot of our people, they don't know Christ is a black man. They don't know. Yes, it's just like I had a window when I said that. <laughs> Jesus Christ is a black man. That's right. Jesus Christ looks like your uncle. He looks like your father. He looks right. like your brother. Right. And a lot of people don't know that. But they will find that out when they start, what? Gathering themselves together. Does that make sense? All right. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana. 
Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth